Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Last night was so wonderful. It was super late, but there's nothing more gratifying, satisfying, and humbling than to share my journey and to help rock people's conscience, to challenge their life. It was funny, a a man said, well, here you are saying, you know, don't try to change people, but yet you are standing here trying to change people. And I said, no, I think it's a little bit of a twist. I'm just here to rock your conscience, to make you think. And to be honest, it's not even me. I'm not challenging anyone's life. I'm just being a vessel for God. I'm just sharing what he's taught me, what I've struggled with, how he has helped me. And really, honestly, what he's putting on my heart through prayer is, oh my gosh, we need to know how to speak dude to people. I was talking with Father Donald Calloway. If you don't know who he is, look him up. His story is phenomenal. He actually was in jail. He was international, like an international criminal working for the Japanese mafia. He was a total stoner, deadhead guy. And he's friends of mine now, but he was, <laughs> he was one that just speaks dude, says dude all the time, speaks normal speak so that anyone who isn't in the vocabulary of the Catholic church or who doesn't quite speak the same, look the same. I'll be honest. When I first started listening to Catholic radio, it made me sick. <laughs> I was talking to a deacon last night. I said, you know, I used to even be uncomfortable just seeing people wear crosses. I mean, just the name of Jesus, people praying, it, you know, it all made me uncomfortable. Why? Because I had let so many spirits into my soul. How do you do that? Well, we're going to talk about that today because what we do, what we watch, what our minds consume absolutely matters to the state of our soul, to whether we have more evil spirits or more of God's spirit. This is why St. Paul says, look, we're not fighting the physical world. We're fighting powers and principalities and You may say, oh, okay, well, I'm not that big of a bad of a person. Why would all these evil spirits try to attack me and bring me down? Because that is their only job. A third of the angels got wiped out of heaven because they said to God, I don't like your plan. How in the world? Now, Satan was the most beautiful angel, top angel, absolutely gorgeous, hence why that evil spirit is called light bearer. The name is Lucifer. There are Luciferians out there. There are so many different satanic and occult types of worship that we don't even know about. That people honestly have either grown up in, meaning their family raised them that way, And they are gaining 
earthly goods. Not everyone who has a lot of money or is in a high powered position or place in life is an evil Satanist, but I'm telling you the most of them are. And they are all a part of this group of people who want to harm God's children. And it doesn't ring normal to any God-fearing mind or ear or heart. Because how can you do that? How can you profess to take care of, let's see, your citizens? Let's just take it from a governmental perspective and tax them to death and do all this stuff that's going on that is truly harmful. Nobody's in a better place right now. Universities have infiltrated the system and they are indoctrinating our children. Same with schools. I'm not calling out specific teachers who are truly trying to help. But I know these specific teachers who are truly trying to help and are feeling completely hogtied because they can't do anything about the ideology that is coming down. There are reports now of increases of like 500% of children. This is a report out of the UK that have now identified as a transgender or gender confusion or dysphoria. Are you kidding me? This is just another fad. But it's a fad that is actually damaging our children's bodies and their souls. Look in Hollywood. Who's supporting all this stuff? How many singers have you seen wearing satanic stuff? The horns, the tail, the pitchfork, all the red blood. I mean, there was a Kardashian commercial where all she was was just stuck in blood. I mean, they're evil, evil. They're showing themselves because they don't care because they hate Christians. It's just the way it is. Corporations, same exact way, shoving in your face this diversity and inclusion. Wake up. It's everywhere. Everywhere. So how do we fight? How do we fight? We got to know what we're dealing with. I mention this all the time. I'm going to read it again, the title. Deliverance Prayers for Use by the Laity. I mean, it is packed. It's just prayers. It doesn't do a whole lot of commentary. So you kind of need to know what you're doing. You should really bone up on deliverance. Read the book Unbound and understand what's going on. I actually went to ministry, so I'm certified, if you will, to go through the Unbound process, which is basically freeing yourself in Jesus. And it's casting out all of these evil spirits that have come in by you, knowingly or not knowingly, and you're doing kind of a deep clean. I like to call it the vacuum cleaner with the extension. So you're getting all those evil spirits out of every crevice of your soul that have been camped out there sometimes for decades. Okay, so I want to just look at one section here. Superstitious practices, Satanism, divination. Now, now here's the deal. A lot of people are like, oh, phew, who practices Satanism? Lots of people, especially people that have been at high prestige levels, generation after generation after generation. Divination, which are methods of seeking guidance and knowledge from demonic Familiar spirits, witchcraft, wizardry, Wicca, new age practices, out-of-body experiences, Santeria, voodoo, Celtic, druid, evil eye, bohomo, <laughs> not even sure what that is, TM, transcendental meditation, mantras, crystals, reiki, enneagrams, magic, evil, oh, enneagrams, I think that those are those little, uh, handheld paper things. So if I flash back to when I was in grade school, 
we would make these things. You'd, you know, have numbers on the front, letters or words on the inside, and then you'd open it up and it would be like, oh, here's your thing. You know, you go one, two, three, four, five, if that's how many times they, anyway, here's how you spell it. E-N-E-A-G-R-A-M-S. So you can look that up. Magic, evil levitation, handwriting analysis, the predicting of future, the reading of the past, of a person's life by the analysis and so forth. Seance, Ouija boards, yoga, black masses, devil worship, palm reading, tea leaf reading, tarot cards, horoscopes, ESP, silva mind control, hypnotism, center prayer, martial arts, any powers apart from God, acupuncture, homeopathic remedies with ritual, portrons, channeling, contacting the dead or disembodied spirits through seances, dreams, channeling, divining with tree root, hmm. causes of the occult against the priesthood, celebration of Halloween, costumes of the demonic, wearing of devil's horns, rabbit's foot, pentagram, tattoos, mood ring, biofeedback, dungeons and dragons, rock and roll, jazz, bloody Mary, light as a feather, stiff as a board, Eastern Star, Job's Daughter, Good Luck Charms, Lucky Coins, Magic Eight Ball, Numerology, Spiritism, Spiritism. Hmm. Astrology, Pyramids, Parental Spirits. This is just a small list. And by the way, the more pornography that you watch, the more evil that you watch on TV, the more inappropriate, immoral stuff. I mean, I even stopped watching Days of Our Lives because it was nothing but huh, adultery and murder and embezzlement and stealing. And that's just not good. Our eyes are the windows to our soul. So what are we bringing in through our eyes, through our ears, into our souls? There is such a thing as perfect possession. Did you know that? I'm pretty sure I was perfectly possessed. Because I absolutely was living in total sin, total evil. And I did not change it. I didn't even really have much. I did have a little because I know that I was baptized with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, who was fighting through all those evil spirits trying to poke at me, <laughs> poke at my heart like, hey, this isn't such a good idea. Hey, we should probably not do that. And then the emotions of shame and guilt. I guarantee you those were not coming from Satan. But some people numb that down so much. Through alcohol and drugs and anything that changes their state of being. So that they don't feel that guilt, that poke, that prod, that God within them. That's saying, hey, this isn't right. This is not right. Stop this. But then we keep doing it and we keep doing it. So guess what? Those are the laziest evil spirits ever because guess what? They don't have to do anything. You just do it all for them. They're getting lots of points. I don't know if you've ever read the screw tape letters. It's basically about evil. And then this young little evil spirit who's getting assigned a human soul to torment and started learning how to torment. And so what it does is it teaches you how evil works on us. The more we know the ploys, which is God will never put horrible emotions in your system unless it's to combat the vice that you're doing. So that guilt, that shame, those are things from God that come your way when you sin. But otherwise, if you're just getting tormented by anxiety and fear of the future and stress and all shame, even shame, meaning it's going to keep you away from God. I'm so ashamed. God will never forgive me. I'm so ashamed. I can't take this to confession. These types of things are evil convincing us in any way, shape, form, Get away from God. The minute you take a step toward God, watch out. Lots of people are super jazzed after an event. You go to a conference, you watch a podcast, you're all fired up. 
to go deeper with God and you make that commitment and you decide you're going to get up the next morning, the alarm goes off and you're like, <laughs> I'm not getting out of this bed. It's so cold. I slept so bad last night. I was tossing and turning. I can pray later. All the excuses will come rushing to you. Why? Because that is Satan. And what do you have to do? There are books written about this, How to Discern Spirits. Discernment of Spirits by Father Gallagher is one. I'll toss you over to um, Dan Burke's book instead because it's a little beginner, more beginner-like. But in that case, I think that's rule number six. In the rule number six, when you decide you're going to go closer to God and then all of a sudden all the excuses come, you've got to do it anyway and then do an extra Hail Mary, do an extra Our Father, spend an extra five minutes in meditation. Why? Because you're ticking Satan off. You've overruled all of the things and the attacks that come our way to keep us away from God. You've done it anyway, even if it was really hard, even if it was a total distraction, 15, 20 minutes of your prayer time was all about just fighting to get yourself back in the presence of God. That's okay, by the way. Why? Because you did it. You fought through it. You committed to 15 minutes and you went 20. God's looking at you saying, rock on you good and faithful servant. I love you. Satan's going, you SOB. What are you doing? I used to be able to pull you away from God so easily because you were so weak. If we look at this as a game, I'm a competitive person. I want to win. And the more you battle this, the more you'll see that spirits are coming to attack you that you can name and that you can cast out. I just wanted to review all of the ways, and not all, I shouldn't say that, that's not a comprehensive list, but the ways in which we have let spirits in, meaning we've invited them, whether we knew it or not, and they came in floods. We can get rid of them, and we can keep fighting when we kick them out. I'm going to go back to the beautiful story in the Bible. The spirit was cast out of the person, went around to find somewhere else to go, couldn't find anything, came back to that soul, found it all nice and tidy, swept up and neat, and brought seven other soul, uh, evil spirits excuse me, to come into that soul, and that soul state was worse, worse than the first. For those of you who listen to me a lot, I might be repeating, but I know that I'm getting new listeners that are jumping on board. So I am probably repeating, but hey, it's okay. Because guess what? We need repetition. We need to have this beaten into our heads until it goes from our minds to our hearts where we truly know why and we do it with conviction, whatever it is, our beliefs our spiritual practices, our prayer life. So today, let's cast out anything that comes our way and let's pray about a real soul cleaning. I'm telling you, you can all do this with Unbound by Neil Lozano, L-O-Z-A-N-O. Wrap the sacraments around it. Take things to confession. The people that you haven't forgiven. The things that you have done against God. Maybe you've hated him or kind of pushed him out of your life, renounced him out of your life. They're also, it's such a beautiful, beautiful process. Somewhere, in my podcast, I talk about the whole deliverance. So I've got hundreds of podcasts for those of you who just jumped on. I, I try to make the titles applicable to, <laughs> to the topic at hand. But we're going to go through more of how does the spirits that attack us 
manifest in our lives. And I remember hearing manifest and I just kept thinking of a part of a car (laughs) when I first heard that. Again, you don't use these words in normal language. So what's the real word? How do these spirits show up in your life? How do they show up in, in your behavior, in your physical and mental, you know, capacity? So I'm just going to give you a teaser. So let's see. Physical ailments, grinding teeth. I was just talking about that last night. Evil spirits were attacking me. I was grinding my teeth like crazy to the point where my neck was so sore. I never ever would have thought an evil spirit would do something like that to someone. Why? Paralysis, parasites, sinus and respiratory problems. Migraine headaches, hearing problems. What about mental illness? Bipolar, manic depressive, dyslexia, learning disabilities, ADD, ADHD, schizophrenia, multi-personality, depression, anxiety disorder, panic disorder. Boy, oh boy, does this not make you think here? How many people are running around? with medication. How many people don't know that spirits manifest in these ways? We have to live life like children, learning every day the how to live our physical life in a spiritual way. The the faster we can figure this one out, people, we're going to be better off. You don't deal with life with physical stuff. You start with the spiritual. Not everything is an attack of evil. I'm not one of those people. Oh, the devil made me do it for everything. No. And oh, by the way, the devil can't make you do anything. That's the biggest lie. The devil knows there's free will. We allow the devil into our lives. We allow certain things and keep doing certain things, which is why possession happens. Free will. It's our choice. You choose how you want to live this life. Do you want to go about it in a anxious and fearful way? You know, constantly just freaking out about life and reacting to stress, grabbing that bottle of wine, that joint, that medication, that gummy, whatever it is. Or are you going to fight the spiritual fight and stop the madness? At the very least, why not give it a shot? And I'm throwing this out there. Get some spiritual guidance. You know I'm a faith coach. I'm here for you. It's much different. It's not this podcast that happens when <laughs> in our faith coaching sessions, it's absolutely 100% focused on your specific issues with relationships, with your professional life, with your children, with your work, and with your relationship with God and the Catholic Church. It's all wrapped up in one. My faith coaching has everything to do with the two greatest commandments, is helping you to keep God the center of your life and the sacraments of the church so that you can do the second commandment, which is to love yourself and your neighbors. I mean, I just want you to focus on your sphere of influence. Yes, he told the disciples, go to all four corners of the earth. I want you to go to the four corners of your family, of your community, of your workplace, And just start living different. Be kind and patient, loving, joyful. Joy is the best net to catch fish. If you're running around like a freaking lunatic, scared about everything, anxious about the future, worried about this, or angry at people, resentful, and walking around like not joyful and happy, where people can look at you and say, geez, what's different with that person? Because I think I want that. We need to work on us. I said this last night and I say it all the time. We can only control ourselves. We can't control anybody else. 
And actually, in some cases, when we try to, you know, change someone, think about an annoying habit that your spouse has or something that your children are doing, the more you harp on it, it's almost like the more they do it. And if we just love them through it, love them no matter what, maybe they will feel that love differently and think, oh, well, maybe I can work on this for her or him or whatever. Stranger things have happened. Now, this is going way fast, way fast, way long. I'm talking really fast. But stick with me because we're going to go through all of these ways so that you can realize something might be attacking me. So we need to discern. It's not always the devil. I was going down that path. It's not always evil. But darn it, when in doubt, cast it out. Don't play around with the spirits. If I can't cast it out and I can't find this peace after I'm done, then it must be me. I must be in my own head. So I need to pray it out. Pray it out. Give it to God. Offer it up as a sacrifice, a unity for him on the cross. Make it meritorious. Make it work. Put it toward your kids or put it toward someone you want to come back to the church or put it towards your own intention. It's time to fight this fight. And the more that we get these spirits away from us, the more we're going to be filled with the spirit of God and be able to have confidence and no fear, no worry about what other people think of us. So we can be God's voice here on earth. Okay, let's pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, come Holy Spirit, we breathe in your peace. We know the world is so messed up. And we want to be light to everyone that we come across in our path. Our light seems a little dim right now, Lord, and we need your joy. We want to spend beautiful prayer time with you. We want to live in your spirit, talking to you all day, feeling that peace, joy, love that surpasses understanding that doesn't make sense to the human being who has no relationship with you. We thank you for the gift of faith. We thank you for leading us to truth and for walking with us as we struggle with our own personal issues. We give it all to you. It's not ours to control. We trust that you're working on us. You're sanctifying us. You're working on us to help sanctify others. We don't know your plan. You've told us that in the Bible. We'll never understand you. Your timing is perfect. Ours isn't. Your will for us is pure and perfect. Our will for us is not. Oh, we're so selfish. We just want what we want when we want it. So we ask for the help to detach from the world's opinions of us and labels and for more love and desire to deepen our relationship with you through prayer. Because we know that's how we receive your grace. And we know that we can't be saved without it. So Lord, teach us to pray. Mary, take our left hand. Holy Spirit, take our right. Guardian angel, please guide us, lead us, protect us every step of today. Be bold, be blatant, be loud because we're dense. We're deaf. We're dumb. We're oblivious sometimes of your existence. We call out to the entire holy army. What a beautiful faith we have, Lord, that you have given us, that we can pray to saints and holy angels, archangels, our guardian angel, Mary, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God, the Father. Wow, what a beautiful faith. And these sacraments that can help us Pick ourselves back up, be white as snow again, eyelash to eyelash with you, Lord. Reconciliation. The word cilia, little hairs, we want to be eyelash to eyelash with you again. 
So prompt our hearts to come to you and reconcile to you in that sacrament that you gave us. The more we go, the more we clean our soul, the more Satan and his minions are getting tired. They're going to go somewhere else. Thank you for your patience with us. We'll never understand your love for us. Oh, in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, who is the creator, the one who loved us to existence, and of the Son, the healer, the redeemer, the God-man, and the Holy Spirit who is within us, the sanctifier, the transformer, sanctifying grace within our hearts. Holy Spirit, change us. Amen. All right, everyone. I love you. Wow. 30 minutes. Oops. This has been a long one. I haven't done this long in a long time, but it's important. Stay tuned for tomorrow because we're going to dive into more of the ways in which evil spirits can impact you mentally and physically, but there's so much more. There's so much more. So we'll continue on with that probably through the rest of the week. It's weapon time, people. <laughs> Alrighty. I love you all. Find something more with God. Have a blessed and inspired day.